Hi again, welcome to yet another video. So this one is simplifying, however this one is to do with multiplying and dividing. Okay, so let's take our first question. We've got 2m squared multiplied by 3m cubed. So, we're going to have to do two things. We're going to do the numbers first, then I'm going to worry about the letters. So let's do the numbers first. Now, big mistake students make with this is for some reason, despite the fact it says multiply in the middle, students will add the numbers together. So I've un underlined the numbers in purple. So 2 multiplied by 3 gives me 6. Okay. The second bit I'm then going to deal with is m squared m cubed. Now, if you think back to the video on indices that we did, m squared times m cubed means actually I add these two indices together which is going to give me m to the 5. So my final answer is the 6 that I got from there, m to the power of 5. So I've done the numbers and I've done the letters but I've done them separately. Let's take a look at a second one. So what would happen if I had 4p times 2 P squared. Now, the first thing a lot of students do is they say there's no indice. There is, because this one is actually p to the power 1, remember. Okay, don't write the 1 down. I'm going to treat it exactly the same. So I've got my numbers to do first. So I've got 4 multiplied by 2. Do not add them, which gives me 8. I've then got p to the power 1 times p squared and that is going to give me p to the power 3. So my final answer is 8p to the power of 3. It'll work if you have two, three, four separate letters. Do each bit individually. So do the numbers, then do one letter, then I'd do another, then I would do another. Right, let's have a look at dividing then. So here we've got a division question. We've got 12a divided by 3. So the first thing we'll do, I'm going to do this in two separate sections again. I'm going to do the numbers and then I'm going to do the letters. So take the 12 divided by 3 first of all. Okay. 12 divided by 3 is going to give me just 4. Now I'm going to look at the letters. Now there's not actually a letter on the denominator of that fraction. So therefore I have nothing to divide the a with. So I just get left with the letter A. So my answer to this is 4A. If you think about it another way, I've got 12 apples and I want to put them into three groups. So therefore, I would have four apples in each group. Let's take a look at a slightly more complex one. So let's have a look at 24B divided by 6B. Again, I'm going to do the numbers. And then I'm going to do the letters. So let's do the numbers first. 24 divided by 6 is 4. B divided by B, when we think about when we did the indices, they actually cancel each other out. So there's no Bs left. So I have nothing. Okay? So my answer is just 4. I'll try one more. Let's go for... 27c squared divided by 9c. Again, do the numbers, then do the letters. So we've got the numbers here. And we've got the letters there. So 27 divided by 9 is going to give me 3. And then for the letters, c squared divided by c... Well, when we did indices, dividing was subtracting. Remember, there's an invisible little one there. So 2 take 1 means I have a single C left. So my answer would be C. There is one time where you're going to end up with a fraction on the denominator. Well, you're going to end up with a fraction because there's something left on the denominator. Let's have a look at one of those. So you'll see this time I've actually put three letters into this, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the numbers, then I'll do the P's, then I'll do the D's. So we've got the numbers are just there. Then I've got 
piece and then I'm going to look at the D's. So 3 divided by 6, that actually gives me a half. Now I'm not going to write that as 0.5, I'm going to write that as a half. Okay? P squared divided by P cubed. So if I take the two P's off the top and I have my three P's on the bottom and I cancel them out, you'll see I actually get left with a P on the denominator of my fraction. So that's where I'm going to put it. I've then got my D's. Again, remember your laws of indices. If I've got three D's in the numerator and one in the denominator, that is actually going to leave me with two D's in the numerator, so d squared. So what I'm talking about, I've got three d's there and one there, and I cross them out. You can clearly see I've got two in the numerator. Probably about the most complicated one you're likely to get. Be careful. Always check is there anything left on the numerator or the denominator, and always treat the numbers and the letters separately. Good luck. Let me know if you have any issues.